In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you five different ways to distort text. That's right, five ways. And within those five ways, there's even multiple ways to distort within those. So let's take a look. Way number one, and actually it's way number one, two, three. We're gonna grab this piece of text up here. You can have any type out here. And this is editable text, which is really nice with all these effects. We go up to object and we go down to envelope distort. Now we have three options here, make with warp, mesh, or top object. Let's go through each of those. First, make with warp. So a real quick way to apply warp options to your text, like arc, arc upper, lower, arch, bulge, uh, inflate, fisheye, any of these, you can even rise the text. Just really quick presets that you can use to distort your text. And then you have options. You can go horizontal or vertical with the bend, and then you can adjust the amount of bend, whether it's negative percentage or positive. You can also distort this, which is kind of like changing the angle or perspective of it. Depending on the effect, it might make it go from small to large or vice versa. But anyway, with this distort option, you can do all kinds of different things with your text. Some of them look worse, like if we do a rise vertical, that doesn't look right, but we need to bring that bend percentage down. And then you can start to see how you can utilize this in your text. And this text, if we hit OK, is actually still editable inside of here. If we double click in here, we isolate the text and we can actually make changes to it. So you can change the font, change what it says, uh, change the color, do anything like that. And then to get out of that, you can see this right here is layer one and then we are currently in the isolated envelope group. We can click on layer one to get out of that. You can also quickly double click outside of the text to get out of it. Now this was envelope warp. So if we go back up to those options with this text selected, object down to envelope distort. We can actually release that right here or adjust some other envelope options. We can even expand it, which is kind of like outlining your text after the fact. So if you wanted to make adjustments to the anchor points of this without it being live text anymore, you can do that by expanding it. Now under release, that's just going to release it back to the text that it originally was. But we also have these envelope options. Inside of envelope options, just a couple things. You can increase the fidelity or decrease it and then you have some other options down here, depending on what's going on in your current text. Back up to object down to envelope distort, we also have edit envelope. So editing the envelope actually shows us the mesh anchor points of the envelope itself. And if we switch to the direct selection tool, the shortcut key is A, it's the white arrow in your toolbar. You can actually click on these anchor points and edit the envelope. So the envelope is this sort of mesh grid that it created with all these anchor points. They have handles, they have anchor points that can be shifted around and you can see how it messes with your text when you make those adjustments. Now I'm going to undo that back to that original uh, mesh here. If we select this in our quick actions, we actually still have those warp options down here. So you can always go back to this and change it if you want to. And you can adjust all that same settings and then hit OK. So you can go back and change that. Anyway, that is a to distort with an envelope warp. Let's take a look at the next one. So we're gonna grab this piece of text, go up to object, down to envelope distort, make with mesh. So this is like creating your own mesh warping grid. You can choose the rows, the columns, you can preview so you can see what they look like out there. Once you have that selected, basically these are going to create a bunch of different anchor points, similar to what we saw before with the preset meshes. This is your own custom mesh. So we hit okay. And what we can do is click on this, press A, that's that direct selection tool. If we click on these guys, we can actually begin to warp just like we saw before. So you can warp this however you want. You can make as few edits as you want. You can make as few anchor points as, as small of a grid if you want. But this allows you to really customize the look of your text, even these inside pieces here. Now, this is looking like it's not really usable, but sometimes if there's something you want to do, like pull this text over, like something was pulling through it, or maybe there's like a magnet over here and you're trying to display the, you know, the power of the magnet with the text or something like that. Like you can make those custom edits here with a mesh group. We'll show you some different custom ways to, to do this with some of these other distorts, but make with mesh allows you to just create your own custom mesh. Now the last one was top object. So if you want to fit text into a shape, which is possible, then first we need to create a shape. I'm going to create an oval. I think it'll fit this text a little bit better. So we just created an oval with the circle or ellipse tool and just clicked and dragged. 
now that we have that, we need to make sure it's on top of our text. We can right click it and go to, we should have a range, bring to front if we want to make sure it's on top of the text. Then we select both, just like that. Now we go back up to object and we go down to envelope distort again, and we can actually make with top object. That's gonna immediately place the text inside of the shape that we had. And it's kind of like the shape guides the mesh. So whatever the shape is, is now the mesh. And you can see that if we go back to that direct selection tool, because these anchor points right here have the handles all set up perfectly so the text fits inside of the shape that was on top of it. So that's how you make a mesh with the top object. Okay, we've covered three, we've got two more to go. Let's select this upper right distort. Now we're gonna go up to effect this time. So in effect, we actually have distort and transform. We have free distort, which I don't think is very useful, I'll show you, and then we have all these other different ones. I'll just show you a couple. First off, free distort allows you to essentially distort the anchor points of this however you want, hit okay, and you have a distort. Not the most useful, it's kind of an old school dialogue window. So I'd go back up to effect and I would use this one for something like roughen. Roughen's a really cool one where you can actually just roughen up your text. So if you wanted like a hand drawn or something a little bit more uh, natural type of text, you can adjust the size of the roughness, the detail, whether it's smooth or cornered. I'm gonna pick smooth for this one and we'll leave it like that, sort of this goopy text now. We hit okay and look at that. Now we've taken a basic font and we've made it into uh, something you could probably use for a Halloween graphic, right? That distort effect up here, uh, distort and transform, these different things allow you to really make some customized edits and tweaks to your text. Now the cool thing about using effects is that if we go up to window down to the appearance panel, we actually see those effects here in the appearance panel. So we can show and hide them and we can click on them again to edit them just like that. And we can actually add multiple effects. So you don't just have to pick one. You could go up there and add a roughen effect, add a distort and transform twist effect if you wanted to and adjust the angle. So now we have the roughen and this little twisty effect. So you can do a lot of different things and they add them all in this appearance panel and you can go back and edit them. Now with the envelope options over here, those do not show up in the appearance panel. In fact, it'll tell you that it's an envelope. So when you see that, that's when you have to go back to object down to envelope distort and you can edit the contents or reset the warp uh, right there or click on it and take a look in your properties panel at your warp options. Or if you're in an older version, you're gonna have this control bar at the top where you can adjust the warp options or even go into the envelope options here. Anything like that is all up here. You can change the style of it, all that kind of stuff. So that's how you would re-edit the envelope options. And then for these guys, they're gonna be in the appearance panel, any effect that you apply to your text. Okay, so we got one more way, right? This is the only one that is actually going to expand our font and outline it, which means the text will not be editable anymore. And that's okay in some cases. So we're gonna select this text and we're actually gonna create outlines. You can see that in the properties panel at the very bottom under quick actions, create outlines. The other spot for this is gonna be in the type dropdown and it's probably grayed out now, but we should see create outlines right here. That's shift command O or shift control O. So once we've created those outlines, there's a couple things we need to talk about. First off, pressing A for the direct selection tool shows us all these anchor points. Now, if we zoom in here and press in Z and then click in and drag, and I'm just gonna zoom in on this T. If we zoom in here, we can press A for the direct selection tool and we actually select individual anchor points or we can click and drag, selecting multiple anchor points. And then we could move these anchor points and skew these paths and start to distort our text in that way. So we can select individual ones, move them around. We can select multiple, move them around together. So you can do a lot of different things here with the text to distort it just by editing these anchor points. We can also round corners. Honestly, this text is no longer text. It's just shapes in the shape of text. Now there's something else you need to know here. This R was made up of multiple different pieces within the font and you see how those pieces overlap, which can create issues. So what I would personally do 
is select this R and then find my Pathfinder options, or I could use my Shape Builder tool. But let's look at Pathfinder first. Might just be a little bit easier. Pathfinder right here. And under Shape Modes, we have Unite. So if we click Unite, now that becomes one clean shape. No longer are there overlapping individual shapes, it's just one shape. And so now when I move, not the whole R, but when I click points and move them around, I can make adjustments to this R. So you can see how quickly you could just grab pieces and then grab the line and skew them out a little bit. You know, if you wanted all your text to kind of like skew to the left a little bit or be a little bit larger, you can do that here. Also with something like this S, you can simplify points. So if we go up to object, I believe it's in pass. I think we should find simplify right there. You can simplify to help make editing this a little bit easier. Now, this is more points. This is less points. Less points might create a worse shape, might actually kind of deteriorate your shape. So we create a few more points until it still looks like it did before. Um, you might need even more points, or you could simplify this yourself, but I would use this simplify tool. And then now you have less points in your S than you had before. If we undo that, you see how many points there were. Redo, a lot less points. So now that's going to be easier to work with and distort if you want. And especially if you're distorting, you probably don't care if it changes the shape, just a micro tiny little bit. But that's how you can edit this text and these letters individually. Now, when you outline text, it's gonna be a group. So what you could do is right click and ungroup. And now you're gonna have all these letters individually. The reason we were able to edit those individually is because with the direct selection tool, it kind of sees through groups and directly selects whatever you select. But you might have noticed that all these were grouped together. So that's how you ungroup it. I believe that we've covered quite a few ways to distort text here in Adobe Illustrator. A lot of different ways, whether you're using the envelope warp or the distort effects, or you're just editing anchor points and distorting your own text. If you have any other ways to distort text here in Illustrator, make sure you let me know, but I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.